What's up, fish tank people? FishtankTV.com, Dustin's Fish Tanks, bringing it to you on a Sunday, baby. How's everybody doing? I hope you're doing well. In today's video, we're gonna talk about illegal plants and illegal fish and invasive species here in the United States. Okay, so your boy D took a two week vacation and I wanna just break it down on a personal note. This was something that was very difficult for me to do. I've obviously got a lot going on, but before I was leaving for vacation, I was trying to prepare and get stuff done to get out of town. And I came across a horrific realization and that is this. In the United States, not like you wonderful Europeans and other parts of the world, you get two weeks out of a 52 week year. If you do the math on that, and Andrew, I'm gonna show you the, the math here. You do the math, you take two weeks off in a year divided by 52, that is less than 4% a year you get to take off and do what you love. Less than 4% a year I get to spend undivided time with my wonderful, beautiful wife and two young girls who aren't getting any younger. That said, it was hard for me because I'm in the middle of constructing Greenhouse 2.0. Oh, by the way, it was a vacation. However, I was on the phone hustling everything I needed to hustle to make sure the ball was still rolling to get water, to get permits, and all the other BS I got going on behind the scenes that you don't see getting Greenhouse 2.0 off the ground. People in life don't get what they want because they don't know what they want. So if I want a fat greenhouse and I want it done before, I don't know, September or October, I gotta hustle while I'm on vacation. With that said, I'm an Ohio boy. I'm from up near Lake Erie. My dad and mom actually had a boat up at Bay Point and I spent my childhood up on Lake Erie catching walleye, catching perch. So to be heading north to the cooler weather was fantastic for me. So while I was up there, we actually headed north to what I believe is called Presky Isle. I'm not exactly sure how you pronounce this beautiful island that juts out into Lake Erie because my mother-in-law talks like this and when she has to pronounce things, they come out a little funny at times. Don't tell her I said that. So as you all know, I am a lover of the Great Lakes and Lake Erie. I actually spent a good deal of time up on Lake Erie as a kid catching and eating yellow perch. While I was up there, I got to check out both Lake Erie and Lake Ontario, and I actually saw Presky Isle, which is a super fat little island, an Erie PA that juts out into Lake Erie, and it had some amazing jungle vowel growing wild there. While I wish I would have gotten the lady on camera, you should have seen my lanky self climbing down into the water, going into the water, and this broad on a kayak goes, can I help you with something? Like what was I doing swimming out while she was in a kayak? So in today's video, I wanna talk about invasive species. I wasn't supposed to be doing work while I was on vacation, but as we were traveling from Lake Ontario over to Lake Placid, we were told by multiple groups of people to check out a place called the wild. It happened to be coincidentally invasive species awareness week at the place called the wild. So while I was on vacation and not working, I busted the camera out to take some great footage for you all of this place. Look, it was 22 bucks. It was worth every penny and I learned quite a bit and I feel it's my job as someone who brings tens of thousands of aquarium plants into the United States and then does disperse them throughout the wonderful continent that we live in. I think it's my job to bring awareness of some of the stuff that is going on with invasive species. I'm gonna to talk today about some fish and I'm also gonna to talk today about some invasive aquarium plants because aquariums were listed in part of the literature I was reading about how some of these invasive species get into our waterways, particularly in upstate New York, but all around the United States. And while you might be thinking, where's this going? What does this have to do with my aquarium? Let me explain. You see, the more aware we are of what species can have a negative impact on the environment around us, the more responsible we are, the less potential government regulation eliminating what could be awesome species being brought into our great aquarium hobby. Here's what I'm talking about. How about fat species of plants that are straight up illegal in a bunch of states? How about fish that are illegal in a bunch of states? I wanna give a huge shout outs to our friends at Seagrest Farms. They are always battling for the aquarium hobby and the ability to bring in cool stuff to keep them as pets. And before I get into my top five plants and fish that are illegal or invasive in a number of the United States, I would like your wonderful feedback in the comments. There's way too many fish coming in invasive into this country. Maybe there's some fish in your country that are illegal that shouldn't be. Maybe there's some fish that are totally illegal and should be. Maybe there's a plant that's illegal in your state and you're not sure why. Or maybe there's a plant that's taking over a pond in your specific area. Please drop me a comment and your feedback on how this is affecting certain things in your aquarium hobby. So while I was up at the wild near Lake Placid, super sweet place worth every penny of the 22 bucks. Uh, one of the plants that was on the invasive species list was a plant that I sell and a plant that I love. It's called Cabamba Caroliniana. 
and I just happen to have a really dope specimen of it right here. And uh, this is what really got the wheels turning for me because this is a plant that I sell, so I'm not trying to like hurt the natural environment. However, this plant was on one of the invasive species lists uh, in upstate New York. So I wanna make a note to all of you hobbyists, like look, one of the things they say that the plants can get into the natural waterways and mess things up uh, is by people dumping their aquariums into a natural body of water. You're not doing anything any good uh, in fact, there's a pond around town here that actually is chocked full of goldfish that people have just let go. Luckily, it's contained. But yeah, never dump your aquarium into a natural body of water. And the reason for that is this. This plant might take over and choke out some other species. And that other species, I'm super generalizing this here. If anybody has more details on this, please drop me a comment on it. But this species might overtake another species. And that species that it overtook might be feeding another species of plant above it and so on and so on, screwing up the food chain or whatever, not to mention uh, like clogging waterways, uh, reducing fish breeding. There's, there's so many different ways uh, invasive species can hurt. So never, ever, ever dump your live aquarium plants or fish into a body of water. And with that little caffeinated kabamba rant, I want to talk about my top five illegal aquarium plants and fish in the U.S. And my number five in my top five illegal aquarium plants or fish in the U.S. This is not the plant because I cannot get my hands on this plant. I want to talk about Utelia ulvifolia, I believe is how it's pronounced. I was not one to pronounce stuff properly. This is not the plant. This is an Apongitan ulvaceous. We actually sell this as a bulb. So if you buy a bulb, you'll get something sprouted that might look like this or smaller, but you're just paying for a bulb. But anyway, it kind of resembles this plant. So that's why I have this Apongitan ulvaceous out because um, the Utelia ulvifolia, I believe is how it's pronounced, uh, is a fast growing plant I cannot bring into the country. Ask me how I know how this plant is illegal in the United States. I actually tried to bring it in and I found out later that it was not allowed to come into the country because of its invasive nature. I actually had to pay to have that plant destroyed. I'm not bitter about it, but it is a really fat plant. It's got these really fat leaves on it. Uh, obviously, somewhere someone has done something with this plant and this plant has taken over a waterway or something and has caused it to go on the USDA uh, illegal species it bringing into the United States. So that plant is not getting through the USDA, but a super cool plant I wish I could have, but is illegal and invasive in the USA. Utelia ulvifolia, my number five in my top five illegal aquarium plants. My number four, my top five illegal fish you can't bring into the U.S. I want to talk about the red arowana. I don't have much to say about this other than why on earth can't you bring a red arowana into the United States? I'm confused as to why this isn't allowed to happen. This fish clearly cannot live in any of the waterways and survive the winter. In my humble opinion, in Florida, I don't know, maybe I'm wrong. Perhaps arowana are all over the place in South Florida, but I doubt it. There are a lot of invasive species in South Florida. I don't think arowanas are one of them. Somebody please drop me a comment on why the red arowana is not allowed in the United States, but we can still get the plain silvers and the jardinis and that sort of thing. So I would love your feedback on why the red arowana is legal. Shout out to that big, beautiful Canadian beefcake man, Joey, for keeping uh, a bunch of red arowana. I think they're fat. I don't know why they're illegal in the US. Please drop me a comment on that. And my number three in my top five aquarium plants or fish that are illegal in the United States I want to talk about a species of hygrophila. I'm going to be a little arrogant here. Ain't nobody bringing in better hygrophila than your boy Dustin on DustinFishTanks.com. Straight up, you can click links around here and check out a super duper species Sunday Josh and I did on all the different types of hygrophila that we carry and why they are, what they are, and what they do. There is one species of hygrophila, however, that we cannot bring into the United States. It has a great name. It's called hygrophila polysperma. Poly means many. Sperma means, I don't know, maybe it means many sperm. Hygrophila polysperma is an incredibly fast growing, also known as sunset hygro. We can't bring sunset hygro, hygrophila polysperma into the United States. Uh, I'm sure it's being sold somewhere around the US, but I can't bring it in. The closest thing that I have to hygrophila polysperma is this, this is Sacrifolia, I believe, right here. And it's a similar look to this. The sunset gets a more pink uh, hues to it. So Hygrophila polysperma, my number three. Hygrophilas are fast growing plants. I talked about them in other videos. This is just three stems of the Hygrophila deformis that we're selling. Uh, so super fast growing. So Hygrophila polysperma, I understand why this plant is illegal uh, in the US. I've had people on the wholesale side ask me if I can get it for them. The answer is heck no, because I'm not allowed to bring it in and I'd get in trouble. But Hygrophila polysperma, I understand why it's a fast grower. It's Hygrophila. Obviously it's growing invasive somewhere in the US. 
My number two in my top five invasive or illegal fish or plants to bring into the US, I am talking about the snakeheads. Oh, they're such skanky fish. Got to wax poetic with you a little bit. My mom was down here the other day when I was a kid in my bathroom. My bathroom as a kid. I had a 20 gallon long aquarium. And in that 20 gallon long aquarium, I went and I purchased not one, but two snakeheads. Those of you not familiar with what a snakehead is, it's got a real long cylindrical body. It's got an amazing mouth on it. It's a super darting, fast, like attacking, um, attacks almost like a rainbow fish. If you've seen how fast a rainbow fish is, snakeheads attack like that only with a bigger mouth and they get huge. Okay, these fish apparently are breeding in the wild in the rivers of Maryland. I want to say the Chesapeake Bay area. Drop me a comment if you got more knowledge on this because you're from that area. But the snakehead, totally illegal, totally should be illegal. I read an article about a chef who was actually uh, trying to make them part of like a menu item to feed them to people. But snakehead, super aggressive, breeding in the U.S., uh, eating other species that obviously is doing harm to. So snakeheads, my number two in my top five illegal aquarium fish or plants in the U.S. And my number one illegal aquarium plant or aquarium fish in the U.S. is you pick. There's so many of them. I want to know your comments on this fish is illegal. Why is this fish illegal? Why can't I bring it to the U.S.? Or this fish is illegal. It should be illegal. And here's why. I've seen it do X, Y, and Z. Or this plant's taken over this lake near me or whatever. So drop me a comment on what fish or plant is illegal and invasive to you. Hit the like button, subscribe button, notification button, share button. How many buttons can I ask you to push and tank on? Later. It's a great thing. Or what kind of, uh, what did I just say, plants, fish? Um, I don't know. Hang on.